IGCSE Biology, Syllabus Statement 319. We're going to make this 319A. And we're going to be describing patterns of monohybrid inheritance using genetic diagrams. Monohybrid means that we have one gene. So all our examples will be limited to describing the, the inheritance of one gene. You'll recall that for an individual that for one gene that individual will have two alleles. The pattern I'm going to show you is one which can be reproduced as you carry out questions uh, and problems. Um, in this example we'll be doing the long version and I'll show you later on how to shorten this. Okay, let's start off with our problem. Our problem is let's make this A. Our problem is that we want to cross a homozygous red petal plant with a homozygous white petal. We are going to use an allele key to abbreviate the problem where big R is the allele for red, little r is the allele for white petal, and you can see that R is dominant, big R is dominant to little r, red is dominant to white. We start off looking at the parental phenotype and we're going to write down that we're going to cross a red petal plant we're going to cross that with a white petal plant now you might like to think about how you would actually do this in terms of the transfer of pollen grains from the red petal plant to the white petal uh, plant stigma, the fertilization which would occur, and then the collection of seeds and the germination of seeds to carry this out in reality would actually take quite a long time. So we've written down the parental phenotypes. Now let's write down the parental genotypes. And in this version, I'm going to illustrate the parental genotype by reminding you that we're dealing with a homologous pair of chromosomes. And on those homologous pair of chromosomes, we have the gene loci for petal color. And in this case, we've got the big R allele and over here, an identical one, the big R allele. We're going to cross that with the white petal genotype, again, the homologous pair of chromosomes, same gene loci as for the red one, but when we read the base sequence we find it's the little r version which generates a white colour in the actual flower. Now the next section requires some knowledge of the process of meiosis and the production of gametes. And this is covered in detail in video 3 to 6. What we have to do is to separate into the pollen grains the big R from the big R. It can only have one of these homologous chromosomes. Therefore our pollen grains would either carry the big R allele or it's possible they would carry the other allele which in this case is actually the same. So we're going to separate the alleles. The white petal plant is producing the ovules, the eggs. And so again our egg will have half of the 
homologous chromosomes so we need to separate these so the egg would have a chromosome with the little r allele or the egg would have a chromosome with the little r allele in fact in this case these are identical and in this case these are identical the next step is what we would call random fertilization the idea is that any of these two pollen grains can fertilize any of these two ovules and what we're going to do here is we're going to set up a table which will illustrate this On this side, we're going to put the male gametes, the pollen grains. So this would be either a chromosome with the big R allele, and here the chromosome with the big R allele. Up here, we're going to put the ovules. Okay, so this would be the little r allele, or the ovule would contain the little r allele. If this type of pollen grain fertilizes this type of ovule, these two would come together to form a new homologous pair of big R, little r, a heterozygote. If this pollen grain fertilized this type of ovule, then once more we would get big R little r. Again a heterozygote. In fact if we then switch to this possible type of pollen grain with this one we would get big r with little r again and once more this type of pollen grain with this type of ovule would give us big r and little r. To the next step. Now we write down the offspring genotype. Notice that all four possible genotypes are big R, little r. Now we write down the offspring phenotype and these are all red. In fact at this point when we say they are all red we are making a prediction and this is covered in section 3.21 of the syllabus. The first generation here of all red petal things is known as the F one, the first filial generation. So the F1 are all red and we know that they are big R, little r and of course we know that this means they are heterozygous.